Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We went to movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Send Us Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about movies that shape their childhood. I'm Sweetie with an IE. And I'm Sweetie with a Y. Hello, hey. people. Ooh, it's gonna be May. It's you know, May. People are obsessed with that when it's May. And I know. I didn't see it. I don't think I even saw it this year, so good for them. Oh my God. My friend Haley sent me like 80 memes about it. It was awesome. <laughs> All I with the Justin Timberlake? It, man. Uh, no, just like, well, the Lance Bass is pretty like prolific on t- TikTok uh, or yeah. something. So it was like mostly like Lance Bass related. And they had Lance Bass like doing the dance and the guy still has it, man. Of course. It was like best. yesterday for him. I mean, how many times do you think he did that dance? A so billion? many times. Million? I mean, he yeah. Could do that in his sleep. He's going to be 99 years old and being like, <laughs> every little thing I, I do. do. Yeah, so good. Um, hold on, I got I to gotta sneeze. Uh oh. <laughs> With gonna May comes allergies. Um, it's going to be sneeze. So, yeah, um, Sweetie's Pick. Yep, Sweetie's Pick, real quick. And, okay. So, um, you know, got to give credit where credit's due. Serious Radio has really led me to so many movies because I listen to 80s on 8. I think I've said this many times. It's mm-hmm. a big deal in my life, okay? I start every morning with 80s on 8. And uh, they p- play, like, s- like a lot of the same songs, which radio stations do, right? Mm-hmm. And one that kept playing sort of the last couple months was Kenny Loggins' I'm All Right. If you're not familiar with it, it goes... I'm, I'm all right. right. Don't nobody worry about me. <laughs> Why you got to give me a fight? Why can't you just let me? I'm all right. And okay, so Kenny Loggins, right? So guy like lit it up for the soundtracks, right? Because you mm-hmm. got Kenny Loggins, foot loose. And you got Kenny Loggins, I've been to the, the danger, danger zone. zone. Say down those five. Did he do that too, or did I just no. make that up? Oh. No, you just made that up. <laughs> so then he hit struck gold with this one, which was the theme song, and then he actually wrote all the songs for the movie. Oh. Caddyshack. I wish so. Kenny Loggins would just do the soundtrack of my life. You know, mm. I love Kenny Loggins. A good singer. B great hype hot. man. Yeah. C great hype man. D I mean, I guess he was in, like, that Yacht Rock sort of era of oh. guys. Hmm. Um, and I think he was in, like, a group because sometimes he's credited with, like, Loggins and Messina, I want to say. So maybe he was in, like, a duo. Mm. Then, obviously, he dumped that dude because he was a star. <laughs> um, just like with Hall and Oates. Did you, do you know that, like, w- the one guy, like, didn't sing at all? It no. was all one of one of the which guys. Which one? And you th- you think it's the mustache one who was the singer, and it's not. Which well, it's who's the blonde one? Well, who which one's that? The Hall or Oates? <laughs> it was Hall. Okay. Or was it Oates? I don't know. <laughs> Look it up. Anyway, so I decided to do Caddyshack. Um, Caddyshack. Here's what I know about Caddyshack. Um, seen a couple scenes here and there. A movie that guys freaking love. And now I said this on Instagram and it wasn't the right thing to say because obviously that's not true. Not <laughs> It's not just a guy movie. Like women do like this too, but I have just found overwhelmingly over the years that guys that I've been friends with or dated have been like, yeah, Caddyshack, like awesome movie. Like I quoting it. Guys being I mean, like the guy, Carl for Halloween, yeah. you know. I think guys love this movie more. Like I'm not say- not saying that. Women women don't like this movie, but I think guys love. I think guys yeah. put this movie on like a pedestal mm, of mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. Com- like you know fantastic comedy greatness. And I think right. sure, 
But I think there's better, funnier movies that came from the 80s. Yeah. That oh, we put oh. on pedestals. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, I, I asked Sweet Eye Jimmy. Us, like the royal one of we the... women or just you and I, right. but like <laughs> that's right. how I feel. So I asked Sweet Eye Jimmy and he said that a um, couple of reasons why he thought that it was a, a guy movie, quote unquote. He said one-liners. Okay, so there's a lot of one-liners in Simple. here. And that's, that's really a guy thing. Simple things to quote with your friends, like saying inappropriate mm-hmm, stuff, mm-hmm. right? Golf. Okay, golf is a male-dominated sport. A lot of guys play golf. There's a lot of, like, golf shit in here. Great. Um, you know, making fun of rich people culture. Like, I don't know. That just seemed like something that stuck out to him also is like okay guys gratuitous get, boobs get behind that gratuitous boobs there's like two women in here and old two young women and old me- women are the only women present in this mm-hmm. movie so yeah so it's like low on the female side of things um so yeah so and then personally myself i have only seen a couple scenes of this here and there I was under the impression as a child and maybe continued until I saw the, right before this movie that this was all about the the gopher, that that this movie was about the gopher and they, Bill Murray yeah. and the gopher terrorizing the golf course. And it's really not about that at all. And I was really <laughs> kind of disappointed. They really, yeah, I think they really use the gopher to like sell this movie yeah. to ch- small children. children. <laughs> Uh, um, it is an odd yeah. choice when you think about it, but I agree. Or they just used him to like market this movie a lot, but it doesn't mm-hmm. really make sense because like, who is that appealing to? Don't you want like the dirty adults to watch this movie? Cause they're the ones that are going to appreciate it. So it's a little, I'm a little confused now looking back at that marketing strategy. Um, but I, I agree. A lot of focus on that gopher. Yeah. So, so much. So anyway, so Caddyshack 1980. So early's early 80 as early as you can get it 80s movie pretty much the um, 70s yeah yeah basically that the early 80s ones feel so 70s because they're right in the cusp there um so this stars chevy 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 we always have Chase. to say it we always have to do the, the <laughs> thing <laughs> the thing um rodney dangerfield bill murray ted knight who if you're not familiar with him big role on mary tyler moore show from back in the day. Who's he? Um, Michael O'Keefe. So he's like sort of like the young star of this. You know, really, f- I'm familiar with him. He was uh, the boyfriend on Roseanne there. He was, uh, what's her name? The sister's boyfriend. Which Jackie's sister? boyfriend. Oh, my God. Jackie. She only had one. Jackie. Jackie's what? boyfriend. Oh, I thought you meant of the two daughters. Um, oh, no, no, no. Oh, interesting. Wow. Okay. Yeah, if you didn't realize that. Oh, my pen just died. I did not. Um. BDM, short for Brian Doyle Murray. <laughs> I was uh, like, pfft, pfft, the, <laughs> the whatever the killer? sexual thing. No, <laughs> I, know. I don't know. BDSM. Uh, BDM, Brian Doyle Murray, Bill Murray's brother. Um, and then you have, uh, oh, and then I added this one in here because I didn't realize till later. S- oh, my writing is terrible. Scott G- <laughs> Golemighty? That can't be right. But anyway. He was like the very Italian looking caddy oh, who the yeah. guy like kept fighting against. And Porky's. he was Brian Schwartz and Porky's. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I looked know. that up too. I was like, I'm pretty yeah. sure he's, he was the that kid in uh, Porky's who yep. Yep. was so, really good at fighting. Good for him. I know, um, I know. He was like the skinniest dude I've ever seen yeah. in the in the pool scene. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like that guy could blow that guy over. Um, directed by and first movie for uh him harold ramus we all gotta start somewhere i know know? i know and written by bdm brian doyle murray and harold ramus and and one other dude so also like written by the actors which is like pretty interesting and i guess was loosely based off of brian doyle murray's experience as being a caddy Mm. so you know that caddy world seems like a good time and also kind of crazy. Our brother-in-law was a caddy. I don't know if you remember that. Simon, Irish, came yeah. over from Ireland and was a caddy in Martha's Vineyard. So oh, li- no, lived the caddy shack life. Oh, and then, like, totally, I don't know what I thought caddy shack meant, but there's just, like, one part in the beginning where they just flash on a literal shack that says caddy shack. 
And I put it all together and I was like, whoa. Where the caddies <laughs> hang out? Yes. <laughs> or where their equipment is? Yeah, uh, both. Um, yeah. Is it big I enough? was shocked. I was shocked. I'm like, oh, caddy shack. Makes yes. sense. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, um, lucrative job, I hear. And you probably, yeah. you know, get told a lot of secrets, which sounds interesting to me as someone who loves to hear secrets um yeah i'd be i'd be interested in in moonlighting as a caddy yeah and i mean it's very like i mean golf's so interesting because obviously you almost always have to be rich to go to be in those private golf courses because you have to pay like a membership and that's so many thousands of dollars a year and then you have to pay for like your rounds of golf obviously the equipment's expensive but then you have the caddies who are always like scrappy dudes um you know just working for tips or like you know people of color you know it was just it's like such a divide with with caddies and like these rich golfers so in this movie in particular it's just kind of like punk kids uh being the caddies and and this one kid trying to like dip his toe into like the more affluent side of things even though he comes from this family of like 12 kids you know irish catholic family like 12 kids so Um, yeah what do caddies do exactly so let's break it down okay so you know first thing carries your bag you know you need someone to carry your bag. A lot of co- uh, courses well, I mean, don't, like they don't I mean, allow like golf courses or so a golf cart. So you have to have a caddy carry okay. your shit yeah, around. Yeah. And, and you don't need to. I mean, some people don't use them. Right. I mean, like and if then, you're an athlete, I think you can do it yourself. Just well, saying. I mean, the real athlete golf guys don't, don't carry their I, own bags. I, yeah. Maybe they should. But maybe in like the big, big, big pro circuits, you know, they're also giving you pointers. They're saying suggestions on what. Um, right clubs again, to use they play with weird. you all the time so like again so if know. you're an athlete like why are you relying on other people to know. tell you things i don't know i think caddies are bullshit i think if, you, if you're a true golfer i think you should you know ditch the caddy it's a weird like servitude well, thing i don't like exactly. it exactly it's, it's, it's golf is very strange in that sense um so interesting with this movie so like we said harold, Ram- harold ramus's first movie relies a ton on improv so you have three real like improv greats you have chevy chase you have bill murray you have rodney dangerfield so they got they get brought in to do these what started out as being sort of bit parts and then their improv just like took over the whole movie and like expanded their roles in the film way more than the director and the writers intended and that's kind of what this movie becomes because it's literally random scenes of them just like improv and <laughs> kind of like going off, which makes the movie kind of disjointed in like a lot of ways. And I was saying when I like read the plot that comes up like, you know, when you rent a movie or something, it'll have like a two sentence plot. And I read it and I was like, oh, like after I saw the movie, I was like, oh, I guess that's what that was about. But like there isn't really like that much of a plot. We'll see how it goes in the synopsis. But it's it's just all about funny guys just like saying inappropriate things. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much. And, pretty much. And, or and it's like funny, but silly scenes random. and like funny scenes yeah. of like random shit. Yeah. Yeah. So this movie was also known for um, being like really crazy filming wise. So this was late 70s, early 80s, tons of partying, tons of cocaine. I mean, people, you know, showing up to work totally like out of their mind. Um, Also known for the, you know, Chevy Chase being kind of a dick and he had come off a Saturday Night Live career but then had left and then had beef with bill murray when he had come back to like guest host so they were like coming off of that scandal and um so like a lot of drama a lot of drama with this movie that you know comes out afterwards um it's interesting because they're both like been touted as assholes um by other people on films that they've worked with so i'm sure when they got together it must have been like full you know repelling Oh, yeah. I think that they only had that, like, one scene together, and that was, like, a huge deal because they hadn't spoken since this, like, fallout on SNL, which we'll talk more about. And then I guess the uh, girl who plays the Irish the Irish girl in this, Maggie? which also was, like, totally random. I'm like, why are you Irish? Um, 
she was in Animal House. I don't know if you remember. She has like a role mm-hmm. in that. She's like the mayor's daughter or something. But anyway, from this movie, she had she had like pretty bad. I guess it was later found out she was like schizophrenic, but like the alcohol and drug stuff like did her no favors, and she had like a total breakdown after this. <laughs> no. and, um, quit acting and then like the IMDb thing dim- IMDb thing says she just like changed her name and lives in like a small town in Connecticut oh God. <laughs> I know God. so crazy what if you're her and like Caddyshack like pops up on TV and you're like oh my god it's not me that was my previous life do you see um, her boobs or just the other girls no just the other girls oh. yeah just the other girls um, it's fine. so yeah so I don't know I went into it like kind of negatively but did have a good time had some chuckles had some good laughs i mean you can't beat some of the the one-liners like from those guys um you know we'll get into it but but overall like silly fun good silly fun um and yeah unfortunately like 80 percent of the movie is now like not cool now um Mm. by like (laughs) like woke and uh you know standards of me too movements and whatnot but um but you know yeah they used the word negro a couple times they used a lot of i think like weird strange words and yeah so there's that but you know that's what that's what you get in a movie from 1980 that's how it is hello sorry I was thought I had a quote, but why don't I have one? That's sad. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So any other thoughts initially? Had you seen this before? No. Mm-hmm. You yeah, had. I saw it for okay. just some like random. I was like, oh, I've never seen Caddyshack. Let's watch it. So I did. Oh. But I don't. Uh, it was like TV uh, version or years real ago. version? The real version. Okay. Okay. So, so you saw the boobs. You saw the turd. You saw the. Yeah. Sure. The inappropriate language. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Awesome. Well, let's get into the sort of wacky doodle plot. Uh, it's time for the sweet synopsis. Yeah. Sweeties. Um, I don't have a quote, but I just want to say the name Mitch Cumstein really <laughs> made me like laugh hysterically yeah, in that whole gross. scene with Chevy Chase and like who's barefoot like shooting the balls he's telling this story about like his college roommate and he's like oh yeah he's like do you know who that kid is i'll give you one guess and the the kid's like uh he's like mitch cumstein my friend (laughs) like my former roommate and i just like spit out my drink i was like oh my god that's like a brilliant name mitch cumstein (laughs) crazy uh, Danny Noonan is the oldest of 30 kids. Um, he, has, he and his family live in a hovel of, you know, like, hovel? Hovel? it's just like, I mean, it's, I don't know. Just like him going out down the fire escape was just kind of, I don't know. It was like I extreme. I not know what was going on there. I'm like, yeah, there's just mm. so many kids. Like yeah. he's just trying to get out the door. I thought Seems that, I thought it was home alone where several families were living together. <laughs> yeah. You're case, like, who right? is who? <laughs> like raise your hands if you're in right. one family. Like what the fuck? <laughs> who lives here? So, um, yeah, crazy scene, chaos, mess. He's just trying to get out the door to go to his job at the good old Bushwood Country Club in Beverly Hills. So very interesting green screen biking scene that like I've never seen <laughs> really before. Um, that was hilarious. But Wait, yeah, so time out. And I want to talk about that bike. Let's just give pour one out for the 10 speeds that were like that, that we used oh to have. Well, those scare. I've never, <laughs> I've never ridden on a 10 speed. Our sister Liz had a 10 speed yes. and I just like, I would look, I would go outside. It was blue. I'd go outside and I would look at it and I'd be like, how does it work? Like, I don't yeah. understand how those teeny little tires stabilize yeah, you. Exactly. Couple What's going things. on there? The the ter- <laughs> the tires were literally like an inch thick, thick terrifying. Number two, those h- handlebars that yeah, curved curly. around. Talk about the most uncomfortable way to ride. I mean, when you rode it, you would just like put your hands on the top. Usually you wouldn't like go down like the professional biker right. and like grab them like that. But like really poor design. Um those bikes were scary, and I feel like you fell off them all of the time. <laughs> but I don't remember that. Like, I just don't like this. It's not like a casual bike to, to me. Uh, we had mountain bikes, which, like, 
maybe looking back, you're like, well, those aren't casual either. Did like, Liz really, the truly that Cali- bike new? What was that like a new bike for her? Her ten speed? Oh, I assume so. Yeah. Well, back oh, in wow. the day of like when she yeah. was fourteen or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess I mean the ultimate. Really thinking about it, the the actually most casual bike is a banana seat bike, oh. and like they never, you know, the they best. just kept getting more extreme from there, and it was like. How, let's just have like a normal a normal bicycle, you know. Yeah. Um, all right. So he he goes to his job, Bushwood Country Club. He is a you guessed it caddy. Um, the the main thing on his mind is that he wants he. So they find out that this the kid who had won the caddy scholarship or whatever was struck by lightning, and um, <laughs> which actually is a common thing that happens to golfers on the golf course, believe it or not. And no um, trees. What? No trees, and you're holding no this metal conducting rod. Yeah. Yeah. So uh so that kid's out. So now the caddy scholarship is is up for grabs. So there's a caddy tournament where the caddies golf to and whoever wins like wins the scholarship. So Danny really wants to win that because then, you know, obviously he does his money his family doesn't have enough money to send him to college. So this is his sh- this is his shot. And he's pretty good at good at golfing. So one of the people he caddies for is Ty Webb who's um Chevy Chase. I always have to think about it. It's really, it's really, <laughs> it's a tough one for me. Um, and he's like an amazing golfer. He's like the son of like one of the orig- the founders of this country club or whatever. Um, and he just like does crazy things. Like doesn't even look and like gets the the ball in and like is getting like holes in ones. Like he's insane. So he's kind of like his mentor, and they and they share this cute like relationship where Ty really likes him and and like thinks he's a you know he's a great kid. And so. Uh, Danny though th- thinks that the easiest way to get like to become a shoe in for the scholarship is to but is to cozy up to Judge Smales, which is like snails <laughs> but with an M, so Smales. <laughs> um, and he's a terrible he's a terrible you know human being, just like this this kind of like villain of the country club where he's in charge of things, but it's just a terrible person. His uh, grandson Spalding is like this like awful oh. <laughs> individual oh. and I just think it's so funny God, that his name is Spalding cracks me up um and so yeah so Danny gets close to that and 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 Smales starts to like like Danny and you know that whole thing works out um and then I you know it's a, it's a bunch of random scenes and like we get like <laughs> golf we got Rodney Dangerfield shows up uh who is Al who Cervic. is that character what? so he's like, like who this is he? like new money kind of guy who uh, is into like is he an inventor know, real estate development or something okay. something boring uh but he just has a lot of money that like okay. he made himself it's not obviously handed down from his family so he's okay. very loud really? and eccentric and um has like these weird gadgets and like new cars and like silly horns and stuff like that. So judge Smales hates this guy and, and Ty Webb is just like intrigued and, and entertained by him basically. So pretty much the whole rest of the movie is, is Al Cervic and judge Smales like coming head to head in like a battle of like how badly can Al Cervic like annoy judge Smales, which kind of like, admittedly does get a little old after a while and you're like okay like we get it like stop Mm -hmm. fucking around but it all comes to a head when you find out that al cervic is just really there to because he wants to buy this this country club and and develop it i guess or whatever and so then there's like two tournaments kind of happening right so you have like the caddy tournament and then you have this other like rogue tournament to decide who owns the country club is that right or did they just play for like a ton of money wasn't it just it was like a ton, a ton of, of money, money. But like i th- i thought it was f- also for the club like yeah. or maybe because and you like, get so much money you'd be able to buy it i don't know right and like ty represents the old money but in the same but in the same sense he's not really in that old mindset like he's more like a younger guy with the old money so like the judge yeah. is trying to get him on his side but he really like doesn't want anything to do with the judge because he thinks yeah, he's, he's a just, loser like, he's a loser he sucks. Then, he's racist um what's the guy lo- the younger guy's name danny Danny, yeah. So Danny, like, trying to get in with, like, the old money crowd, like, shows up at the yacht club, all, like, dressed as a captain once he gets, like, invited there. 
and cozies up to the judge's niece who's in town from New York and like they end up hooking up even though he's dating Maggie who's like Sweet Maggie. this scrappy like Irish um, student who's like co- like coming from like doing like a summer abroad and like working at the golf the country club is like a waitress and like at the snack bar and stuff like that so he's kind of like double teaming and like just trying to like play both sides trying to like up his status you know thinking he can like be on that rich side and play like a rich person um because he's good at golf and and if he like can act rich you know so there's that like kind of whole dynamic too so it all comes down to the end to this golf tournament between um like old and new money so it's the judge and ty and what's rodney dangerfield's name Al Cervic. Well, Al, Al, Al Cervic and Ty are like on the same team, and then yeah, the judge and team. his buddy is the is doctor like on the the other the other team. But and then like also in the background, you have um, Carl, um, the sexual deviant of the golf course, who like um, is the groundskeeper and is just very weird and and like has a weird obsession with like old ladies because th- those are like the only ladies he's seeing or something, or he has a <laughs> fetish for old women. It's unclear. Um, but he has this Dead. constant struggle with the gopher who's causing mayhem around the, the golf course. And so he's been instructed to, like, take out that gopher by whatever means necessary. So he really takes that to heart. So, like, throughout this whole movie, he's on a constant battle to, like, get that gopher, which is important later on. So um, the tournament starts and Al – first, well, Danny wins the county tournament, first of all. There's kind of, like, not a lot of fanfare there. It's, like, kind of just, like – no climax. It's just like, yay, Danny. Hooray. So now he's in with Judge Smales. So Judge Smales picks Danny to be his caddy for the tournament. Um, and things are going okay. But then they like they keep raising the stakes like of, of the whatever. Al Cervix doing terribly. Turns out he's like not really a golfer. And he's like not really good at golfing. Um, he like throws or like hits the ball against a tree and it like hits him in the arm and he fakes an injury and is like, Oh my, my arm's out. I can't play. I'm out. (laughs) And so, uh, they get to nominate like someone else to take his place. And so Ty picks Danny, um, to play for him because he knows that like he's been you know practicing you in the caddy caddy tournament like he's a good kid. Like let's do this Danny. So now it's them versus these old fucks and comes down to like the last putt and Danny, uh, you know, great shot. The ball is just hovering like just ever so by like on the rim of the cup. And that's when Carl pushes the like dynamite stick down of like, I'm going to blow up all of these holes to get this gopher out of this fucking golf course. So when he does that, the ground shakes and then the ball goes in the hole. And so Danny wins it for for the cool kids. Uh, nobody's excited and the guy is not, Judge Smale isn't going to pay. Then Al Cervix like security and like gets him off. So, you know, all, all's good in the hood. So now hopefully it'll be under new management, I guess. And everybody can play golf or I don't know. Did they make it? I don't it? know. We'll did have to find out make it? in Caddyshack 2. They're, they did do a second one? There's a sequel, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I remember that. Weird. Um, yeah. Weird. They, they kept it going. Um, Dan Aykroyd's in that one. Hmm. Cute. I already Cute. watched what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I already watched it. Interesting. Jonathan Silverman. Ooh, cool. Nice. Robert Stack from Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> um, Chevy it's Chase. Such comes a strange back. comedy career, but Ooh, was Robert also Stack. very serious. Like, why did he get know. Unsolved Mysteries, but was also like a hilarious person in like Airplane and Caddyshack too? I don't really get it. Know. What a strange trajectory. Okay. T- Caddyshack 2, 1988. The shack is back. <laughs> when a crass new money tycoon's membership application is turned down at a snooty country club, he retaliates by buying the club and turning it into a tacky amusement park. So it's not huh. Al Cervic? It sounds like no. something he would do. Oh, my God. Dan Aykroyd is like the new Bill Murray. He's like the... Maybe this is the one where, like, I, the the gopher has, like, a little bit more of a role, and that's what I've seen more. Maybe. I mean, he is featured. He, like, dances at the end of this one, and, like, he's moving around a lot. And, like, I mean, he's he is featured prominently in it. 
why Caddyshack 3 never happened. <laughs> animatronic gopher. But yeah, that's the movie. Uh, oh, Pretty Randy s- in it. silly. Um, I think that... So I, I guess one scene I did see before I saw this whole movie was the, the candy bar and the pool scene, mm. which um, is musically scored, you know, similar to Jaws. And they, and they, they set it up in that way that it's like this like dre- this foreboding, you know, musical note of like something's approaching these uh, this dramatic irony, because like we as the audience know there's like this like piece of shit in the pool and the people swimming and it don't know and it's getting closer and closer to them kind of thing um so it's really actually like a really well done scene um Mm. but it turns out to just be like a baby ruth a baby ruth baby ruth wait it's baby ruth right we've had this conversation Mm -hmm. before in goonies the candy bar is baby ruth yes okay not babe ruth okay well very similar it's confusing um it's right it's like a it's like a it's like a baby ruth the candy bar or is it a snickers or do you Baby not know? Ruth is peanuts covered No, I know, but do, do they show you, like, what kind of candy bar that is? Yes. Yes, they do, because I wrote down, wow, what a, mo- a moment for Baby Ruth in the okay. 80s between Great. this and Goonies. Big right. candy bar it's in like the 80s. Perfectly, I mean, you don't see those anymore. I mean, they you do. M- I wonder if they took out, like, 10 bars of chocolate from the wrapper, and they're like, which one looks the most like a turd? And right. the answer was Baby Ruth, because it does yeah. have those, like, round bumps of <laughs> the peanuts or whatever okay i'm never eating a baby ruth again <laughs> not that i ever did but disgusting <laughs> now no thank you um it is that scene is pretty funny and it does look like a real turd and the best part is when so they clean the whole pool and they drain it out and they have guys with like toxic waste suits you know on scrubbing the the pool and stuff and then bill murray like picks it up and he like realizes it's a candy bar and takes a bite of it and like the woman <laughs> faint screams and faints oh my god i like lost my mind it was so funny so like i mean it's not (coughs) so knowing what we know now about kids in pools like it's not out of the question that a duty (laughs) would just be like floating in a pool right like that's totally something that could happen oh my god Uh, ronnie sweetie junior pooped in the pool in the pool this summer and it was traumatic. It was not a, a <laughs> solid turd. So unfortunately, it was a little more complicated than that. But Wait, what pool? The kitty pool? Yeah, my pool. You oh, your pool. The, yes, pool, yes. the poop, in, poop in the pool incident? Oh, my God. We Get did. her out. Get her out. <laughs> we did have to drain it. We did we have to did. let all the water out. Yeah, it was so gross. It um, was pretty gross. But, yeah, the th- and then the, the thing that cracks me up a little bit about the scene, though, is that, like, when they find out there's, when somebody first sees the poop, it's, like, this small child, and he's like, duty in the pool, duty! And then everybody's screaming, like, duty, duty! And I just, like, <laughs> this movie is, like, not PG, right? Like, it's very, it's pretty crass. Why are they all of a sudden using the word duty in this scene instead well, of, like... Kids poop in the pool or just like poop yeah. or like and then like some older kids like there's a shit in the pool you know like <laughs> i feel like there was more of an opportunity there and i wonder like what made them scale that back if it was like a direction from the studio or or whatever of like we got to tone down the the swears so like let's say duty instead or something maybe um, it was more funny or maybe that's something kids would maybe. say have you ever like heard shit. someone say duty like i think it's an outdated expression definitely maybe we should bring we it back it anymore I know. It's Let's bring it cute. back. Bring yeah, it back. Into it. Bring, bring it back. Bring it back. Um, the uh, other thing I wanted to, to bring up is that, um, where is it? Oh, so Ronnie Dangerfield. So I I have a feeling you feel the same way that I do about Ronnie Dangerfield, which is that like we don't really know him, his work too well. And I think he's like one of those comedians that like I'm not too into. Like he's too <laughs> like in your face silly. Yeah. Um, and it, it doesn't really appeal to me, but is, is that how you f- feel about, about Rodney or, or what? Well, I'd like to go into his other movies. I'd like to see Ladybugs. I'd mm-hmm. like to see, um, what's that? The big one school, the school one. School uh, days. No, uh, um, no, he's like summer school. Uh, no, no. What is the Rodney <laughs> film? Rodney Dangerfield. School ties. School. Back to school. Back, Back to school. Back to school. Um, I'd like to see that. 
So I'd like to see kind of his big hits. Uh, that was 1986. Okay, cool. Oh, Robert Downey Jr. is in that? Random. Um, plot no centers respect. on a wealthy Get but no un- respect. Yeah, no respect. A plot centers on a wealthy but uneducated father who goes to college to show solidarity with his discouraged son Jason and learns that he cannot buy an education or happiness. Um, so yeah, so I'd like to see his other ones. I mean, he was pretty funny. So I read that like he you know, really is, wasn't used to acting. Um, he, you know, did stand up and had, was, and he used to doing bits. Right. So Mm -hmm. when they would film, Harold Ramis would be like, okay, action. And he would just like sit there and, and they'd be like, um, okay, Ronnie, like it's your line. And he just like, wasn't, didn't know how movies were made. Like didn't understand it and never done it. So Harold Ramis would just say, okay. Cause then, uh, once, Rodney Dangerfield was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do my bit. And he's like, yep, do your bit. And so Harold Ramis would just say, instead of saying action, he'd say, Rodney, do your bit. <laughs> and he'd like come in and just like deliver these little zingers because that's like his entire yeah, character. He, yeah, he's just, just like, zing, like zing, zing, zing. Yeah, he's just zing. zinging. Um, yeah. uh, um, something that so sticks. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah, something that sticks out, though, is like his dance. Was so like but one of my favorite parts <laughs> is like he has like all these bizarre contraptions. Yeah. And one of them is like a radio in his golf bag. And so he like they're like playing golf on the field. And he's like dance party. And then like turns like the <laughs> flap down and there's like a radio in it. and they're like and he does this like weird dance of like a guy who has never danced in his life having to act as if he's dancing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't I doubt Ronnie Dangerfield is a dancer at all and Harold Ramis is like dance and he's like is this how you dance and it's like it's these weird fucking movements it cracks me up I just so awkward hilarious it was it was really funny um I my least favorite part honestly and I know it's not it's a lot of people's favorite but I did not like the Bill Murray role in this at all I think it's kind of dumb I don't think like most of it is funny at all um and I'll probably get like shot for saying that because it's just like everyone's like favorite character and stuff. But like, I don't know. It was just like dumb. Yeah, it's a little stupid. Dumb uh, comedy. I just like know, couldn't that, like, get past. Can... Yeah, his like dirtiness of just like his yeah. leering at old women just like really made yeah. me uncomfortable. And like the way that he, I don't know, just like his internal monologue is like very gross. Um, the scene where. Um, Ty Webb like sh- you know <laughs> shoots his golf ball through his window and then he like goes in to get it which was like the famous right. improv scene that you were talking about that was pretty funny but like uh, it wasn't like drop dead hysterical I think people just find <laughs> Bill Murray's like weird like yeah. like his weird mouth is like all right. like weird and he talks funny like they just think that's funny my favorite scene with him was when the priest like comes golf like goes to come golf and he's like we better head out before um it's like starts raining and he's not even a caddy but Mil- bill murray's like okay and he like picks up the bag and then it's like pouring yeah. and like hurricane winds and they're like walking to the holes and getting like blown away and then the guy gets struck by lightning yeah, so random and yep. jimmy tried to convince me that he died and i was like probably what? and then he like shows up at the bar at the next scene i was like i thought you said the priest died <laughs> But he didn't. Well, you would think if you get struck by lightning, you would. I know. You know, once I saw a science movie in, you know, in science class when they're like, now we're going to watch a movie about lightning. And there was this scene where this guy had gotten, it was like one of the only people in the world who had been struck by lightning twice. Oh, my God. And both times was golfing. And after the first time when he realized he was alive, he was like, I don't really care if I could walk or die or live again. I just cared if I could golf, if I could swing my golf club again. And and then he got struck by fucking lightning again. So oh crazy, God. crazy stuff. Wow. Lightning does. Although not that twice. crazy because the evidence says that if you get struck by lightning once, it's kind of like in you and then you're, you're kind of just like a conductor what? in yourself. And so you're just more prone to lightning attacks later or something that's what i heard i don't know i don't know if it's true or not i don't know whatever um but yeah i agree that not the funniest parts for me by no, far like not at all and like there's just like way more other funny parts um but yeah pretty pretty funny movie is it the most like funniest movie like to come out of the 80s like no i don't think so you know in our world definitely not um no. 
I can see, I guess, why it would be for some people. But um, I think Harold Ramis went on to do bigger and better things. Groundhog Day. Um, so <laughs> good for another you. animal. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I have a, I had a question for you. So like in the beginning, when Danny's caddying for Ty, um, he asks they're talking about the car- the career aptitude test, which is like this this bullshit test you take in high school or whatever that's allegedly supposed to tell you like what career you're suited for. It's a bunch of like stupid questions. Mm-hmm. Did you ever take one of those? And what was the answer that came out? I think I took a quiz like that in that book. What color is your parachute? Huh. It was like a career book you got yeah. like when you graduated, and like someone gave that to me. Um. I don't know. I don't remember now. I think it was something really disappointing and I probably cried and I was like, yep. no. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So we did one in like middle school of all times. Like at the at the charter school, we filled one out and I got mortician and I was like Ooh. horrified and just like so sad about it. And I was like, what the fuck? Because I said I liked being alone sometimes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's an extreme. <laughs> I don't like to I talk know. to anybody. I just, like, I just want I mean, to talk to the dead. It's kind of cool because it's like you can kind of know like doctor stuff, but you don't have to worry about killing anyone because the person's already dead. I don't know. <sighs> oh. Weird. Weird. That, I'm not a mortician. Me so I mean, Fuck usually you morticians end up being like, it's like a family business. So you yeah. end up like growing usually. up around all that stuff. So it's not like so spooky i guess um it's not spooky it's just like it's just life and death it's just like if you've watched six feet under you know it's just like it's just a thing of life god i'm still not loving hanging out with dead bodies i gotta (laughs) say would not be my top career pick um sure 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 um okay cool um so yeah so that was fun glad we finally did that one i just feel like it was just been bugging me for like such a big comedy of the 80s and we hadn't even like touched on it so or even really mentioned it um so thank you kenny Loggins. you continue to make my 80s on eight dreams come true every morning singing your your jams oh yeah we didn't really mention kenny Loggins. so other than that main song like we said he sings like all of the songs in the movie which is kind of cool when, i thought like, it was just the same that. song the whole time i no, guess i guess i didn't realize songs. they were all different yeah. <laughs> but they were all kind of similar credits. right well, because the same guy <laughs> sang them so and wrote them. So, of course. So in I'll the, have to in listen the same, to the soundtrack. There's some... Oh, baby's crying. Damn it. Um, there's some movies that do that. And, yeah, sometimes it's like, oh, like, that's a good idea. But otherwise, you know, it does give it kind of like the same tone. Yeah. Sorry. Sweetie Junior's upset. Oh no! All right. Well, we'll wrap it up. I think your your headphones are getting interference with the baby monitor. Just kidding. You probably don't have the baby monitor. Okay. <laughs> uh, wrap it up. All right. Well, I will hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> Come find us on Instagram at Large Marge Sent Us. Thank you as always for listening. Bye. Bye.